Hello, hello, 4142, let's do this. 141, 142, but you knew what I meant. So the question states, we have a random variable x that is normally distributed. So whatever this value is, is x. And it is random and normally distributed, and the mean is 10. So x bar, 10. Standard deviation, 3. And in fact, it's probably not a sample, it's probably just mu. So this is a population distribution with a mean of 10, standard deviation of 3, and we have another value, y, that's also normally distributed with a mean of 9. Mm -hmm. Mean 9. So I'm going to put mu x, mu y, mean of 9, Standard deviation of y, standard deviation of x, standard deviation of y is 4. Now it says they're independent. What that means is if they're independent, then we can apply the rules of transformation. So when they ask us, take y minus x, we can act like this is a question of difference. So we want to find the mean right, the mean difference, or mu of y minus mu of x. Because the difference that we're being asked for is the distribution of y minus x. So when we add or, or subtract numbers, we can just merely add or subtract the means. So I have 10 minus 9, when I subtract the means, but oops, mu of y is 9, mu of x is 10. So I do have to keep track. I was supposed to take 9 minus 10 and get negative 1. So right away, I'm eliminating D and eliminating A. And notice they anticipated I might make that mistake of not keeping track. Which one do I subtract first? Definitely I got to subtract y from x. Now let's look at the standard deviation. Well, we know the rules of standard deviations cannot be added and subtracted like I can do with mean. The rule of standard deviation is in fact a rule about variances. And again, the rule is add variances. I've said it a million times. So knowing that we add variances, that would mean that the standard deviation of the difference is equal to the standard deviation of y plus the standard deviation of x, but I can't add standard deviations like this. I have to add variances. Well, what is variance? Variance is merely standard deviation squared. So this looks a lot like a squared plus b squared is c squared. It looks a lot like that. Now let's take a look. The standard deviation of y was 4, so I'm going to do 4 squared. The standard deviation of x was 3, so I'm going to do 3 squared. And so I get 16 plus 9. And so I end up knowing that my variance, or my standard deviation of the difference, squared is 25. Therefore, I know that the standard deviation would be the square root of 25, or 5. That's one of my answer choices. So that's how I got answer choice C. Now let's take a look at question number 142. It states a T statistic was used to conduct a test of a null hypothesis against an alternative H sub A where mu is not zero. So right off the bat, instead of a one-sided test, where maybe mu is greater than zero or mu is less than zero, our alternate hypothesis here is that mu is something other than zero. So what that means is that you're looking at a test that instead of being on one side, is on both sides. Now they give us a p-value, we don't have to calculate it, of 0.056. So we're kind of being asked to figure out, well, what does that mean? It says a two-sided confidence interval for mu is to be constructed of the following, which is the largest level of confidence, which we would then know zero is not inside. So let's walk through this. 
our p-value we know is two-sided. So we want to take our p-value and divide it. Didn't mean to do a square. Divide that in half. So that would be two. Eight. And so what we're really doing is we know that the area under the curve is this and this, and we're trying to contain the average. And so we want to create an interval knowing that it would not contain zero. Okay, so working backwards from this, I kind of know the area here that's left over, right? If that's 0 0.208 and that's 0 0.208, I can figure out that I'm really just taking whatever, if the area under this whole curve is one, I can take one minus 0 0.056 and get 0.94. So if I look at the table here, I know that if I'm creating an interval, and this has 94.4, technically I guess the decimal would be there, then this is the closest or the largest level of confidence I can have. What's another way of thinking about this? I had thought to have you guys look at this confidence interval just here from the chart and, and think about how these probabilities work. Now here's my table C and that's, um, excuse me, I want my table B. Here's my table B and here's my T distribution just like they said and this is my tail probability. And that's where, that's where these tail probabilities live. So we have a tail probability of 0 0.056, so somewhere around here. And as I look down, I notice it falls somewhere between 80 and 90. However, when I look at the picture, that's only one-sided. So thinking about it in another way, notice that a tail probability of half of that, or 0 0.025, if this area would be 0 0.025, and it was a two-sided test, there'd also be 0 0.025 on the other side, which would mean in between here would be 95 left. And that's kind of what they're having us do here in this problem. So notice a 95% confidence interval would leave two and a half to the left and two and a half to the right of a two-sided test. And ultimately that's what they've asked us to do, but moving the number up, and again, we look at it here and we'd have to do a 93, because that's the next up, or next inward, a 93% would be the largest level we could be confident that zero would not fall within. Thank you for joining us.